After three weeks of this offensive, the Iraqi military is at last about to enter Mosul. The men of the elite counterterrorism force the Salahuddin Regiment are in high spirits. But after the open plains of northern Iraq, they're about to meet a terrible new reality. This is not a place these soldiers know, but their enemy does. Right side, there are bomb the challenge they're facing right now is that they're snipers on rooftops and they're receiving incoming mortar fire that ISIS is shooting from areas that have civilians in them, which makes it almost impossible for the counterterrorism unit to be able to fire back. The three cars have disappeared down the side street. There's one more to the right. Already there's a sense that this will be a different battle. Civilians are still waving white flags, but the roads are getting narrower. We're in ISIS territory. It's clearly marked. The convoy slows down, and on the soldiers' faces, nerves begin to show. And then the roads give way to muddy alleys. There's nowhere to turn. It's so claustrophobic. And every car here, every garbage can, could be a bomb. It's heartbreaking that some families are still here. So is his 19-year-old daughter, Noor. She's crying. Noor was accepted into university. But she never went. Her younger brother, Saif, is paralyzed with fear, cowering with his mother in the back. Then a car approaches, frantic, shouted warnings. Clearly, he's not a bomber, but he's critically injured. Minutes later, he is dead. An innocent taxi driver, it would seem, in the wrong place at the wrong moment. Now there's more incoming fire. They've been coming across quite a bit of sniper fire, gunfire, mortar rounds rocket-propelled grenades, and, of course, those uh, car bombs. Even in the midst of battle, moments of humanity. But they are all too fleeting. ISIS fighters are on the rooftops. Three grenades land in the street. I can't open, I can't open it. Just, uh, I look, uh, this. How did you, how did you get this? Uh, grenade. Bullets ricochet off our vehicle, intensifying as we go forward. Then a suicide car bomb right behind us. Oh, oh my God. Oh, there was a flash of orange, ears ringing. Then another. That was the second massive explosion like that that we just heard the first one they said was a suicide car bomb and it exploded on the vehicles that are just behind us. There were a number of soldiers just running in the street. One was carrying his buddy who seemed to be wounded. They spot enemy movement. The incoming fire is now intense. The bulldozer is hit. Our vehicle takes more fire. Soldiers shoot at a motorbike racing towards us. It's hit. 
We hear the hiss of a tire losing air. We realize we're trapped. Vehicles, wreckage, everywhere. Our MRAP takes a direct hit. Okay, what are we doing? I don't know. I honestly, I don't know. We need to go in this house. Huh? Go, 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 go. In, in there. We take cover, injured soldiers and a terrified family. Brees too has a small head wound. More wounded arrive. Injured himself, Staff Sergeant Ahmed treats Brees' head wound. ISIS has systematically targeted and disabled almost every vehicle in our convoy. There are only three working Humvees. It's been hours since they called for backup and none has arrived. They need to evacuate their own wounded. They don't even have enough vehicles to get everyone out. And that's assuming that they would even be able to do so because they say there's still ISIS fighters that have them surrounded on all sides. Later, ISIS released its own video of the battle. They had filmed the very house where we were taking shelter from just across the street. It's almost dark. The front line has moved right next to the house where we have sheltered. We need to move, but every time we try, gunfire drives us back. It's complete chaos and absolutely terrifying. We need to get to a Humvee five steps away. Finally, we make a run for it. Clambering in as quickly as we can. But there are so many damaged vehicles in our way, our Humvee gets entangled in another. We break free, but go just 10 yards. A long and frightening night in hiding follows. We had no idea that ISIS fighters were filming the war booty they'd recovered from the regiment's wrecked vehicles just down the street. It's dawn, and we're still alive. We're with more than a dozen wounded soldiers, only six who are not. Ammunition is running low. It's been almost 20 hours since they first called for backup, so they sent out the alarm that they were surrounded, and they're still waiting. The soldiers with us are exhausted, but determined. They know they're in this fight alone. On the rooftop, they scan for ISIS fighters. <laughs> the soldiers get ready for the attack they know is coming. Someone has been shot. The grief of a woman yards away is almost hideous. Where is he, she yells. And then it erupts again. ISIS has the house surrounded. Our only defenders are mostly the walking wounded. A grenade lands in the courtyard. More wounded are brought in. They tell us it was tossed by an ISIS fighter in the house behind us. An airstrike hits the house and brings down the outer wall of the home we're in. The family we're with hide under the staircase. One of the boys cries, I don't want to die. Hours later, a moment of utter relief. 
A regiment has arrived as backup, along with a Humvee to evacuate us. It's less than a mile to safety. We're lucky. We can leave the combat zone. He's with me. He's with me. These men will have to return. The battle for Mosul has only just begun. Arwa Damon, CNN, Mosul, Iraq.